my own contribution to this reparatory global uh, discourse is to that objective. I, I do this daily because I am a positivist, I am an optimist, I am a humanist, and I believe that the world must be shaped by the finest thinking available to us so that we can enjoy whatever humanity has, has to offer. Recently, I was privileged to be a part of a conversation when the British Prime Minister, uh, Mr. Cameron, visited, visited Jamaica. It, it was an historic occasion. Uh, no British Prime Minister had visited the former British colonies in 15 years. Uh, he admitted uh, on his tour that yes, Britain had neglected its former colonies in the Caribbean. Uh, he also admitted that that will change and that his visit was part of a new dialogue which was going to open between Britain and its former colonies in terms of a development strategy. That news was welcome uh, by the region. Not so welcome uh, was his idea that he did not wish to participate in a conversation about the history of Britain in the Caribbean. He did not wish to speak about slavery. He did not wish to speak of the colonial past. Uh, Britain had, had taken Jamaica from the Spanish in 16, 1655 and had ruled Jamaica until 1962 when Jamaica forcefully demanded, demanded its independence. And so he said, there will be no apology for slavery, there will be no conversation about reparatory justice. And this is, this is what he said. He said, I acknowledge that these wounds of slavery run very deep indeed. But I do not hope but I do hope that as friends, and we have gone through so much together, that those darkest of times are now behind us. And that we can move on from this painful point, from this legacy, and continue to build for the future. He promised 350 million pounds in Caribbean development projects for the region. He also promised 25 million pounds to build a prison to host Jamaican prisoners who would be repatriated from Britain and serve out their sentences back home. This relationship between the 350 million pounds for infrastructural works and 25 million pounds to build a prison in Jamaica to allow Jamaica to accommodate Caribbean prisoners who ran afoul of British law, created a remarkable conversation in the country and in the region. This 350 million pounds was defined as a down payment, and the whole region wondered a down payment on what? The significance of it though, was that Mr. Cameron, who is six generations removed from his ancestor, Sir James Duff, who had received two million pounds in contemporary money for the 202 slaves he owned in Jamaica. And the legacy of that massive compensation for slavery uh, has passed on to the Prime Minister. The question is, if we are going to move on, can we move on without the two million pounds? that his ancestors had received back then for the 202 Jamaican slaves that they had owned. Admittedly, Jamaica was the Caribbean's largest slave market. The British imported into Jamaica 1.3 million Africans. At the end of slavery in 1838, there were 300,000 remaining question has to be asked then, how do you reduce 1.3 million people to 300,000 after 200 years? Less than 25% survival. Slavery in Jamaica was genocidal. We understand then that when we speak of slavery, 
in the context of Jamaica in the aftermath of Mr. Cameron's speech, we are speaking also about the genocide on that island. Three months earlier, the French president, Mr. Hollande, had also visited a Caribbean colony in Guadeloupe. He too said, there will be no apology for slavery and there will be no reparations. But he was in Guadeloupe to open a multi-million euro museum dedicated to slavery as a gift from the people of France so that the African community in the French islands could see the horror of slavery displayed in their museum. He went on to add that France owes the people of the Caribbean a debt of gratitude. But this gratitude would not be expressed in either an apology or in any form of reparatory justice. All of this came against the background of what had transpired in 2001 when President Aristide of Haiti demanded the return of the 150 million francs that France had insisted that Haiti pay for their own self-liberation. You may recall that uh, Haiti had fought a war of liberation, uh, declared their independence on the 1st of January 1804. Uh, the Haitians were the first uh, people on this planet to give Napoleon Bonaparte a whipping. And in return for this whipping, uh, France insists that if the Haitians wish to be recognized as an independent nation state, they will have to pay compensation to their former enslavers. Uh, 1825, the Haitians are celebrating the 21st anniversary of their independence. France had refused to recognize Haiti as an independent nation. All the slave-owning nations of the Western world, uh, Britain, Spain, Portugal, Holland, Norway, Sweden, Denmark, the United States, all said they will not recognize Haiti until the French recognize Haiti. The French said, if you want recognition, you pay for it. The Haitian people in 1825 had therefore a decision to make on their 21st anniversary. There were parties in Port-au-Prince, but there were also French gunboats in the harbor. The Haitian cabinet met and agreed that they wished to be reinserted into the international community and this reinsertion will cost them 150 million francs, which is 21 billion US dollars in contemporary money. This money was paid, agreed to be paid, and was paid to the French government over 100 years. This extraction of economic value out of Haiti in the first 100 years of its nationhood crippled that nation. In some years in the 19th century, the payment to France in reparations accounted for 60 to 70 percent of the foreign exchange earnings of that nation. Aristide asked for the return of this money to the people of Haiti. He wrote to the French government, government to government, calling for the return of this money. The French government invaded Haiti. Aristide was overthrown and removed from office. His successor, his first public statement, was that the claim for reparations and the repayment of this money was a criminal act and remove from the state. And therein was the end of that conversation. President Aristides had acted against the background of the UN conference in Durban in South Africa on race, xenophobia, and related intolerances. The American government under Bush had pulled out of this conference on the basis that any discussions around slavery and reparations were internal national issues 
and not to be ventilated in international fora. President Clinton had earlier expressed a statement of regret on behalf of the American state, but had also refused to apologize. President Obama followed the Bush-Clinton line and also indicated that there is no need for a formal apology. President Holland did state in Guadeloupe that history cannot be the subject of financial transactions. President Obama declared that the discourse on repar reparations and reparatory justice is divisive of the nation state. The Western world, therefore, seems united in its opposition to the concept of reparatory justice for the people of Africa. And so there seems to be a Euro-American alliance that stands in solidarity and opposition to justice for the enslaved peoples of the modern Western world. But yet, the conversation continues. It is growing in intensity. And as one of my colleagues have said in Guyana a few days ago, the water is boiling and someone will have to make the tea. I've been working long days, I've been working long nights, still ain't get my cut paid, still they want me to smile, S-O-L my G, if my whip break down tonight, oh so you the boss man, I'ma tell them on sight, show respect, cut the check, cut the check.